Here I have an Arches watercolor paper. I've trimmed it down to a size 8x10 from my 9x12 sheet. And I have just lightly traced a hexagon onto my paper for my frame. And I've traced uh, the word dad onto my paper that I printed off from a font on my computer. And now I cannot remember the name of this font, but you can just pick whatever font you like. I just tried to pick a more masculine looking font that would work for a Father's Day frame. Because I did do an entire series of cherry blossom monograms and names, and I had some that were themed for Mother's Day. So I wanted, my friend commissioned me to make a more masculine frame for her, and I thought that doing leaves and foliage would be really fitting. So if you watched my previous video about learning how to do eucalyptus, here's a great way to incorporate those eucalyptus leaves. And I also did one with olive leaves, like this. Although I didn't film making this, so my apologies. Uh, maybe if there's some requests for it, I'll make a tutorial on how to do this one as well. But I am going to incorporate some eucalyptus leaves to frame up this out and then make a frame that says Dad, and it will be a great Father's Day gift. All right, so I am going to have my eucalyptus come from this corner and go up and then start here and go down. So we'll actually just turn the paper around when we get to that point. So mixing up my colors, I am using Undersea Green, and I am mixing some indigo into that to get that really gray-blue color that I want for my eucalyptus. A little more indigo there. So it's like a really blue-gray green color. I'm just gonna add a little more water to that to dilute it down so I get a really nice light color. And if you wanted to, you could do kind of a brown stem for this. You can kind of customize it a little bit. You can do some different variations in your color. If you want to do something that's a little more blue or green, just mix it up however you feel would look good. If you don't have the undersea green and indigo, you could also use like a hooker's green and mix it with uh, some kind of a violet would kind of give you the same color variation that you're looking for. So I am going to start, I'm just going to turn my paper slightly here. I'm very faint line for my hexagon here that you probably can't see on the video because I can barely see it with my naked eye. I am going to just use my round size four brush and I'm going to just follow that curve and I'll come off to the side here just generally following the line that I've made for my hexagon, but I don't have to follow it exactly. So I've got some stems in here and I'm just going to start adding some small leaves at the top. And if you watch my other video, the eucalyptus leaves are kind of rounded, almost like a fat teardrop shape. And you can have some very thin stems coming off to connect, or you can have them come directly off of the main stem. I've got quite a bit of uh, water there, so I'm actually going to soak some of that up with my brush. And then when you want to do the veining detail, you'll turn your brush around and then just apply light pressure to make a little bit of a ridge in your paper. Don't want to press too hard, and you want to do that while your paint is still wet so that the paint can settle down into that little groove. And if it was not wet enough when you made the ridge, you'll have to go over with another layer just to get the paint to settle in. So with very, very light pressure, I'm making that very fine little stem line. And some of those I'll just have directly connected to the stem. Here I'm overlapping that stem, so when I go back to do the next layer, I may want to just have my stem go over top of that, because you can kind of see through it a little bit, but um, I'll wait for that to dry and then I'll go over that with another layer.
as you get down more to the base of your stem, you can start increasing the size of your leaves. You can vary up the direction they're facing a little bit too if you want. Here I've got the top of another little stem, so I'm going to do a few small ones on this one. I'm going to wait for that to dry and then I will go back and I'll add a leaf kind of coming from, well, maybe I can do it right now. I'm just very carefully going right up to the edge of that other leaf and the stem. Make it look like it's going behind that. same right there so it's just tucking right behind that leaf so very carefully going right up to the edge so it is still a little wet so it will bleed certainly can just use a dryer or heat tool really quick to dry each leaf if you're going to be going right up against one if you are worried about it bleeding if you've watched any of my videos you'll note that that is my biggest mistake in watercolor is not being patient for things to dry because I am constantly hitting my brush into other things and making mistakes with bleeding and getting better at fixing them. So here I'm going to have another leaf from behind. Clustered here actually. This is a good practice with brush control of getting right up to the edge of another object without overlapping and making that extra layer on top of the edge. You'll need a nice slow steady hand. And then I'm getting smaller here as I get up to this tip. one that's a little dark here. I'm just going to lift some of that paint off of there. I have a little too much. Looks a little out of place. Okay, so that's that first spray. I'm going to flip my paper around so that I can work on this next one. And I'm just going to follow the same exact method and just vary up the branch length. Maybe I'll do a little bit shorter and have it curved slightly different. Like these might feel like they're taking a long time just because you have to keep flipping your brush around to make the veining details. So just be patient and take your time. I feel like I'm not happy with a piece if I was just trying to rush it sometimes because I just wanted to get it done and then I have paint bleeding everywhere where I didn't want it or have things that just aren't as polished looking as I would have desired so sometimes I just need to slow down a little bit right, so that come 
all from behind there. Here I want that stem to be in front, so I'm just going around it, and then I can go back and fix my stems, maybe add another layer to darken them up after the fact. And I'll have this one kind of coming from behind there too, maybe it's turned. Maybe that gives you a little bit more interest to your piece instead of having all just straight, even leaves going down. It looks a little more natural and less, um, I don't know what the word is, less cookie cutter, I guess would be the word. More handmade look. And people can tell that you really did it. It wasn't something that you just print it off on a computer. I think making a piece of handmade art is really special and when you add those little details and people can see that you made it by hand, it just adds that extra specialness to a gift. And I don't know about you, if you give your art as gifts, I have been the last couple years I've been painting pieces. Maybe the first year uh, they weren't as fancy, but now I'm I'm really putting a lot of work into some of, like I've made some landscapes as gifts or just special pieces. My mom is a really big fan of cardinals, so I've painted some birds for her. And I feel like you have to be really special to warrant receiving one of my gifts because I want to know that you're going to appreciate that piece of art and hang it in your home. And I think that's really special to have those handmade touches that you give someone and they appreciate it. Um, you know what? Let's see, I'll have one that's kind of, because I'm kind of curved here, I'm going to have this one just like the hint of one coming from behind here. Okay. All right, I'm going to flip that back around. I'm going to go back over my stem here. And just another little layer. Here I had that leaf going in front, so I'll just skip over that. Go back over this one as well. I'm just still using that same color mixture of my green with my indigo. There. Then you can really see that that leaf is in front of that stem. All right, now to finish this off, I wanted to do the metallic frame. I'm just going to add another layer to that one really quick. Just so you can really see that that's behind it. Okay. If you have any of these that you wanted to just add another layer over, I would do that while it's dry. And you can just make it a little bit darker just especially if you have some that are overlapped on each other then you can really tell the edges so here this one is darker that's behind so you can really see that defined edge and tell that there's two different leaves there and not one big giant leaf all right so i want to still use one of the colors that i used in here but i don't want the same green for the dad i want to do the indigo so i'm just going to do straight up indigo for the center there And I'm just going to use my round four for that. And like I said, all I did was I printed off a font that I liked, used my light pad, and I just transferred it over with a pencil. And choosing fonts is something that's quite an art in itself, I feel like. I, for years, I've been scrapbooking, and so 
picking out fonts for my titles to use in my Cricut and the die cutting machine if you're not familiar with that. I cut out titles out of fonts and I can literally spend an hour looking through all of my fonts because I have so many on my computer and trying to find just the perfect style for the theme of the page. So if you are really good at that, props to you because I still struggle with that, even though I have a lot of my favorite fonts. But I'm just trying to get a nice even coverage and keep my brush really nice and steady. If you are really, really good at brush lettering, you could just freehand that too. You don't have to do that or write it out with pencil and then go over. Make sure you get your spacing correct and nice and centered. That is another reason why I like using a font and tracing is just then I can line it up really nicely and then I know I'm right in the center. Personally, I find freehand lettering to be a challenge because I have problems with spacing it properly. Like I think it'll take up this amount of space and I'll start at one point and then I will end up so off center and I'll ruin the entire look of the thing because I didn't plan it ahead. It's another mistake to try to avoid is failing to plan out your design. can lead to quite the frustration if you are wanting it to look a certain way in your head and then when you try to execute it you have all of these little things that just didn't turn out the way you had hoped. So if we're doing these type of pieces like a frame monogram or these names, this is one instance where I definitely need to plan out my design ahead of time. Or at least have a general idea of what I want to do so that I end up with a nice finished piece. All right, this is a little bit of a tedious process getting this part done. So I'm wanting to go here. that just dry I may need to go over it again but for right now I think that's okay all right so I am choosing to use some gold to do my frame for my hexagon uh, just because I'm painting this for a friend of mine and I did one for mom with cherry blossoms for her and she uh, had that in gold and this is what she requested I think that the indigo would look really pretty to do for the hexagon or maybe even just doing the same uh, green color that you know, I'm, I don't know, there's lots of different variations, so you could do it to your taste, but I'm using this Winsor & Newton Designer's Gouache in gold. I already had some on my palette here, so I'm just going to re-wet that. And I'm just still using my round size four. I've used that for the entire project so far. I'm just going to go over that hexagon that I very, very faintly drew. And if you have trouble keeping a steady hand, uh, I recommend just holding your, holding your wrist on your desk or the table 
Um, I have seen some different kind of tools that you can use to um, give you a wrist rest over top of your painting. I've seen different art sellers sell kind of a, a little stand that you can put over top of your art to rest your hand on so that you don't touch it on your painting. I'm just going to slide that out of the way for a moment. Okay, so here I can see my hexagon is peeking through some of the open spots because there is some gaps. I just wanted to fill that in just to complete it. Just a few little spots. I tried to mainly put the leaves over top of where the hexagon would be just so I wouldn't have to try to go in between all of the little leaves and fill in those gaps. But And I went too high. Shoot. I raced that just enough that I could barely see it and then I couldn't see where the end was. Just a little bit too much there. So to fix that, lift that paint, which I'm still getting a little bit of that shimmer, but I took a clean brush, damp, not dripping, and I'm just picking that up and then wiping it on my towel. So that is how you can fix any of those little mistakes where you put a little drop of paint where you didn't mean to. Some colors are harder to lift than others, so some of your darker colors or reds are more staining that you won't be able to lift the paint, but generally if you make a little dot of paint somewhere that by accident you can fix it to be barely noticeable or completely lift it even. I'm just turning my paper as I go to make sure that I don't have to put my hand across the whole paper. And here I've covered the stem up pretty good across the whole hexagon. I don't need to fill in. I'm just gonna go right up to the edge of that stem there. I tried to just do an even width across the whole way, just about the brush length or brush width, I mean, sorry. And that is my finished frame with eucalyptus and dad. Really great idea if you wanted to make this as a piece as a gift for Father's Day, some nice home decor piece. You could scale this down and do it in a card would be really clever too. Um, make sure you subscribe to my channel and if you want a more in-depth tutorial on how to do these eucalyptus leaves, I do have another video where I just show you just how to do the branch and I also have some great ones on doing olive branches that you might want to check out and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my upcoming tutorials. Thanks for watching!